Hi, my name is Jan Tinkenberg, also known as Jan Tink. Welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. All the products I use in this video are listed in the description below with links for shopping for your convenience, or you can find them on my blog post. I'm going to show you a technique I'm calling floating flowers over a pattern background. I was inspired to create this technique after looking at a card done this way on plain card stock background. I love the look, but I wanted to take it further by using pattern background. As well, the card I was inspired by was done before we had the stamp positioners we have now, such as the Misty, and I thought how much easier the Misty would make it to do this technique. The card I was inspired by was probably colored after heat embossing, and alcohol markers can dissolve embossing powder, which can be a real mess for your image and mess up the tips on your markers. Using the Misty, I could stamp with hybrid ink first, color, then stamp again with Versamark, and heat emboss. For this technique, I'm going to use a new set at Simon Says Stamps called Even More Spring Flowers. It's a really beautiful, clean line art style that works well for this technique. You could also use More Spring Flowers, which was, came out last year, or the original Spring Flower set. I love how the plaid is still visible through the coloring on the flowers. I was so excited about this card that I decided to make a video for you to share my technique. For the base, I'm using some plaid paper from Blonde Fawn. I'm going to trim my plaid pattern background down so that the pattern is centered in the card front size that I'm using here. Now I'll use the creative corners on the Misty to position my pattern paper so that I can precisely place it back in. And I'm going to make sure that the die cut that I'm using doesn't cover the flowers too much so I put that down first to see where I was going to place it and now I'm just placing my flowers for stamping and creating this floral scape which is what I like to call it and I put the little leaves around and then I will close the lid and pick up all the stamps making sure to put plenty of magnets down so that my paper doesn't move thing about having such a dense pattern like a background stamp, it is really necessary to have a misty to make sure you get all of it stamped because sometimes parts of the image really don't contact well with the paper. Once I get it done, I clean these really well and leave them in place. Now I'm coloring with my Copic markers and I do three or four shades in the same sort of color range, starting with the deepest and coloring my way up to the lighter shades. I want the plaid to peek through this so I don't want anything so dark that it totally covers the background and doesn't allow the pattern to show through. Using a hybrid ink allows me to color without disturbing the pattern of the stamping whereas if I used a dye based ink the alcohol marker might dissolve it. And I also chose a color that was close to the original background so that when I stamped again, if I didn't get it precisely over my first stamping, um, it wouldn't mess up or make it look really weird like to have a black line peeking out from a, the white embossing powder. It was just easier to use that darker line so that it was matching the background better. I colored in the centers with some yellow shades and then I used some green shades to do the leaves. I really love these colors and how they look really great against this background. In the first card that I made I did it in a monochromatic way but since this card only or this plaid pattern only had one color in the background I felt I could actually do the leaves in green instead of using the same shade as the flowers. And actually this looks really nice and you can leave it this way without heat embossing over the top but once you heat emboss it really makes it pop so I like like doing that now to make the flowers float I'm going around the outside of the lines with BB00 which is one of my favorite shadow colors that I use for shadows I don't like to use gray for shadows as much because it's kind of flat and also light doesn't really work that way a lot of times when you look at a shadow outside you'll see that it's not gray it's more of a purple color or a blue and so I tend to use purple for my shading now I'm going to put my 
pattern paper back in the background or in the misty and then I'm going to stamp using Versamark. Um, using the creative corners really helped me get this precisely in the same place as before. So you'll see when I put my powder on that I got it exactly over the top of the first stamping. Okay, I'm going to heat emboss and make sure that all of that powder gets melted. And then I'm going to add some stems with a white gel pen just to make it look like a floral scape, like all these flowers are growing together and not just randomly stamped. I'm going to die cut using stitched rectangles from Simon Says Stamp and die cut my greeting using some heavy white cardstock from Nina. I'm going to adhere my panel to this piece of fun foam and I'm going to start stacking up my die cuts to create that dimensional look. I'm going to adhere them together using a Sakura Quickie glue pen. And then I'm going to use the negative space from my embossing to place these. First, I'm going to use the little letters on top of each other right there so that I can just push them out through the negative space and it's really the easiest way to place them so that they get in the right places. So I'm just adhering them on top just like that. And this squicky glue pen really sticks well, so I recommend it. I'm using the square from the Creative Corners from Misty, and then I'm going to just use the negative to adhere my letters so that they are placed exactly the way that they're supposed to. Now I just put some adhesive on the back and push them through the negative with a stylus to get them in the right place. And I do the same with the ones on the top. It's really a great trick for precise placement of die guts. Okay, now I'm going to add some green marker to the stems. I wish I left the lines a little further apart because I'm essentially coloring on top of the gel pen and for one thing it's lighter than I like it and also I need to make sure to get that white gel pen off my marker tip. And I scored a base using Nina Solar White 110 pound and adhere the panel to the front of this. Now I'm going to add a couple of um, doodle bug sprinkles in silver glitter just up to the upper corner to give it a little more visual triangle punch. I like to put a couple of dots. I'm just, I've been doing this for years and I'm cards almost always to me look naked if I don't do this so I almost always do it but I like the way it looks and I'm really OCD so I have to make sure to get them right up in the corner it's very important they have to be in line looks good and then I'm going to add some of the BB00 to the sides of the stems so that they float away from the background a little bit, just like the flowers do. It dries, it dries a lot lighter than this. It's kind of dark looking when you first put it down. The original card, I used a lighter shade BB000, and I had to go over it several times to get the same effect, so that's why I went with this darker shade for this particular card. Let's see, does that look right? Yeah, it does. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. Yay! I'm just going to make sure it's creased really well. Gorgeous! And get rid of those. Get rid of that. Here are both of the cards. They're so gorgeous. Thank you for watching. You can visit my blog at jantink.com for more information. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the link in the end card. And thank you again for watching. Bye.